galwr aelodau i drefn yr eitem gyntaf yn y gendan i'r prynawn yma i'r cwestiynau i'r prif weinidog a'r cwestiwn cyntaf Jenny Rathbone. Diolch Llawid. Uh, will the First Minister provide an update on the Welsh Government's strategy on modal shift to sustainable transport? Yes, we're promoting sustainable transport by investing in our rail and bus services, by developing integrated public transport networks, such as the Metro in North and South, uh, ensuring active travel becomes more mainstream and working with local partners to identify pinch point areas and deliver infrastructure improvements to smooth traffic flow. Thank you, First Minister. Um, I just wanted to specifically focus on um, how we're getting more people to bicycle, um, because I was very shocked uh, when I had a delegation of Year 12 uh, students from St Tylo's, um, all of whom are 16 or 17. None of them were bicycling to school. Uh, some of the, one of them even said, oh, I live four miles away, as if that was a long way to bicycle. Um, and if we look at the statistics, less than 3% of children aged 5 to 16 go by bike, but 30% or more go by car. And if we can't start with the, the current young generation, we're never going to get the modal shift they've got in places like Holland, where 40% go by bike, and in one city in Denmark, the second city, 80% go by bicycle. So what do you think the government can do to really get that uh, change in culture? Yeah. Well, the Active Travel Act, of course, is the basis for, for doing this, recognising that cycling, while of course important for health, is a mode of transport, and it's important, as is walking, of course. I've always thought that with, in trying to encourage people to get onto bikes, it's important that they feel safe. A lot of people won't go on the roads and mix with cars. In the countries that, that um, the members mentioned, uh, in, in the Netherlands, for example, and in Denmark, there is segregation between bikes and, uh, and cars, and that's one of the ways in which people can be encouraged to, to, uh, to use bikes more. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, particularly in our cities, to establish uh, bike routes into the cities. We have some bike routes that tend to take people away into the countryside, but we're not yet in the position, I believe, uh, where we can say that we have a, a proper network of uh, urban cycle routes that will encourage the more reluctant cyclists to actually use a bike rather than feel they've got to compete with cars on, on the roads. But, the Active Travel Act, of course, it has begun the process of uh, changing attitudes and uh, encouraging local authorities to put in place proper provision for bikes. Russell George. Um, First Minister, a year ago, the Welsh Government's position was that um, there were no immediate plans uh, to uh, use public funds for electric vehicle uh, infrastructure. Now, since then, of course, the UK Government has stated its uh, position to phase out diesel cars by 2040. Uh, would you agree with me that it's now essential that the Welsh Government does invest in electric uh, vehicle charging points in town centres initially and then further afield to make that transition, of course, from uh, diesel to electric cars a reality? Yeah. Well, we already do, of course. Uh, for example, the on-street residential charge point scheme, which supports local authorities with 75% of capital costs of procuring and installing residential charge points uh, and, of course, with uh, an associated dedicated parking bay. It is a challenge now for all governments to put in place the network of charges that will be needed uh, before uh, 2040, and in particular, uh, ensuring standardisation as well of charges. As somebody who drives a hybrid, there are several different sockets that are used, and it's quite difficult to find uh, the right uh, charger. But I suspect over the next uh, four or five years, particularly with intervention from governments, including ourselves, building what we've done already, uh, we will see a, an expanding network of charges, which will encourage more people then, of course, to look initially, I suspect, at hybrids, and then, of course, at uh, fully electric vehicles. Simon Thomas. Uh, dear Chloe, we continue to get a point in Lina Cabada Trudan, which I join all at a bike yo a pamo boisig iwe felly um board cyclo anwan nidin inig or cantlinia um a uh, taithio uh, uh, active on heavy and van or cantlinia taithio out of the leol do we well go mod or cantlinia leol ama see the son of cyclo and kidestin hamven a chwayon on see them and why cyclo and ganol cantlinia well for the taithio ama she could be then an engraved to hona uh, but believe the and and Gorford Mae'r rhaid i nhw'i roi rhyna i ni erbyn y trydydd o dachwedd, dwi'n byd yn excited, dwi'n byd yn eiliniaeth gwrs, 
a win of course bydd them all the vessir vaint more bait maridore with it mind a vaint moi or give no geth as they should roy no er moinino even in a cavaliad yawn a a gyda cavlumder yawn question dai gareth bennett uh, dear Llywydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on Cardiff's bid to hold matches for the 2020 UEFA European Football Championships? Yes, we've been uh, meeting with the FAW about this uh, potential uh, bid. Uh, we already have an ambitious major events uh, strategy and we'll continue to meet with the uh, key stakeholders to uh, consider how we can take this forward. Yes, thanks for the uh, response. It's usually um, potentially a good idea to, to make a bid for these large events due to the uh, the potential to generate revenue for local businesses, although there is also the, the possibi possibility of disruption as well. So there is a balance um, that we have to, to, uh, to make. But um, we do have a problem at the moment with the state of the, um, the Cardiff Central Square and also the possible lack of capacity of the Central Railway Station. So are you confident that those issues will be resolved in time for those championships in the summer of 2020? Yes, yeah, Central Square is being uh, developed uh, rapidly now. With regard to Central Station, that's a matter for Network Rail. We have pushed Network Rail. I've done it in meetings with Network Rail, and it's uh, been done in other uh, ways to redevelop Cardiff Central. It's, uh, it's at a cost of hundreds of millions of pounds, but nevertheless, it's a redevelopment that is uh, needed. We know that uh, potentially the passenger numbers at the station will increase threefold over the next uh, 30 years. Uh, with 11 million passengers a year going through the station, it's by far the busiest in Wales, and it's growing. We're almost at the point where, where trains are queuing uh, to get into the, uh, the station. Uh, so we have uh, impressed on Network Rail the need to invest in that station, given the fact that for so many people, it's the gateway to Wales. David Melding. Yes, I commend what uh, uh, your government and the previous administra administration has done to attract uh, high-level events and how you've worked with the respective uh, sporting associations. I think that's a key uh, partnership. And uh, these sort of achievements is a, you know, produces a gift that keeps on uh, delivering because the marketing value, people still talk about the wonderful days when the FA Cup was in Cardiff. I mean, many people yeah. were, would like it back, or at least the semi-finals, which yeah. of course are in uh, Wembley yeah. still because of uh, their, their particular business model. Um, but it really is an, you know, an exciting way to market Wales and uh, there have been great, great benefits. And you should really learn the lessons about how much a government can do to market the nation as a whole? Very much so. We've learned that over the years. Uh, not long after I became First Minister, the Ryder Cup was held. Uh, that was a huge event. Some 25,000 people there on the final day, millions watching around the world, and of course culminating with the Champions League final, which, which ironically was almost a consolation prize for us for not getting uh, to be chosen as a venue for the 2020 uh, Championships. It's a consolation prize we very much welcome, of course, uh, in that regard. But What's been key to this is the vision that was shown, particularly in the 90s, to develop the Principality Stadium. Yeah, there was, it was controversial at the time, many of us remember that, but when we look back at the old stadium, it was basically a concrete bowl with toilets. So that's the way it was described. Now, of course, it's a far more modern stadium. We can attract these events. And it's true to say that sport carries probably the greatest reach of all when it comes to, uh, to promoting Wales. Uh, and we know, of course, with the Euros last year, that probably had the, the greatest effect in terms of uh, signalling to people that Wales exists as a separate uh, nation and, of course, triggering more interest in Wales, therefore triggering more investment in time and more visitors. Evan David. To, um, to present a slightly contrary uh, view, Llawydd, uh, in evidence to the Economy, uh, Infrastructure and Skills Committee <coughs> last week, the Wales Tourism Alliance uh, said that whilst the focus will need to remain on major international events, they only tend to benefit a small number of locations, particularly Cardiff. The chief executive of the European Tourism Operators Alliance agreed and said there are lots of reasons for having a party, but economic benefit for the tourism industry is not necessarily one of them. Um, what is the First Minister's view and um, how can the government take steps to ensure that um, large-scale international events don't harm the Welsh <laughs> tourism industry? We can have both. I mean, one of the issues that we face with large-scale events is we have to uh, ensure that people have places to stay outside Wales. The reality is the capacity isn't there uh, entirely in Wales to host people uh, as they come to Wales. That will develop over time. Now, it isn't the case that it's either spending money on major events or uh, spending money on the rest of Wales. For example, we've supported tourism initiatives around Wales. We look at uh, initiatives such as Sir Snowdonia in the north, the support we give to rural businesses around Wales. In some ways, a major event provides an immediate economic impact but also, of course, it, it acts as a, a catalyst 
for developing interest in Wales and therefore for tourism around the whole of Wales. So the immediate impact, it's true to say, is more localised, but the longer term impact, in my view, is, uh, is much broader, and that's of course what the way we'd uh, want it to be. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, last week the Welsh Government uh, presented its <coughs> waiting list figures for the Welsh NHS, uh, and the figures showed that in Wales, one in seven people are on a waiting list, or 450,000 people. Uh, in England, that figure is one in 14. Uh, there are pressures across the United Kingdom uh, when it comes to NHS services. Everyone acknowledges that. Uh, as we go in into the busy winter months and with the financial pressures that are on the Welsh NHS of four of the seven health boards uh, projecting a deficit in excess of £30 million, what help is your government giving to health boards to address the spiralling numbers that are waiting on waiting times here in Wales and above all the financial predicament that many LHBs face? Well, first of all, I don't accept the premise that the question is, is based on. If we look, for example, at referral to treatment times uh, over 36 weeks, that's improved by 35% between March 2015 and March 2017. March 2017 was also the highest performance on the percentage of patients waiting over 26 weeks since March 2014. We know that diagnostic waiting times had improved by 58% by uh, March of uh, this year. So I don't accept that uh, somehow the situation is worse uh, in every case in terms of Wales compared to England. He's right to say that all health services face pressures. He asks a fair question, which is what preparations are being made for the winter. Uh, every year uh, we make preparations for the winter. The pressures do come on. Uh, we're not immune to the same pressures as other countries in the uh, UK. But we know over the past uh, few years that the plans that we have made have been robust enough to deal uh, with the pressures that come on during the winter, and I'm confident we're in that same position again. You're quite right, First Minister. You and I could trade statistics, and the gallery upstairs and those watching on TV would just get bamboozled by those statistics. But the figures do show that in Wales, for example, there's been a 400% increase in people waiting 12 months or more for a surgical procedure. In the best health board, cum taf, no one waits 12 months or more. In the worst, or one of the worst, Betsy Cadwallada, which is under the direct control of your government, there has been a 1,250% increase in people waiting 12 months or more. So it is the role of government to make sure that good practice is spread out in the NHS here in Wales. So why is someone in Betsy waiting so much longer for a procedure than someone in Cum Taff. We only have seven health boards. Surely that good practice should be spilling out into all the health boards so people do not see these spiralling waiting times here in Wales. Well, what I can say is we recently announced £50 million of performance monies in order to continue. We're now trading statistics again, but uh, I think we have to. In order to continue this improvement trend uh, for waiting times, uh, the Health Secretary and myself have been very clear on the need for further improvement in waiting times, and all health boards have committed to further improvements by the end of March 2018. There are plans in place for all organisations and monitoring arrangements to be in place to ensure the improvement is delivered, building on the progress over the last two years. Yes, there are inconsistencies. Yes, we want to make sure those inconsistencies are dealt with, which is why we've allocated this money and why, of course, uh, health boards have made the commitment that they have. I agree with you, First Minister. The NHS is about an acronyms and obviously statistics, but very often we miss the actual patients who are waiting and the clinicians who are under pressure, and they just want a straight answer. And when you do have so many health boards in Wales, as I said, four of them, and it's worth repeating the deficits or the projected deficits that they do have, uh, such as Howell Var, 49 million, ABMU, 35 million, Cardiff and Vale, 31 million, a lot of people will say, how can you manage those deficits whilst controlling and driving down the waiting times. Are you confident that by the time we get to March, waiting times will be declining and the deficits will be in hand and wiped out, as the health sector has indicated, or will you have to bail out the health boards who have these projected deficits? No, we expect health boards to be able to manage with the resources that they, that they have. Uh, clearly, we could not be in a position where health boards knew that whatever they spent, uh, they will be bailed out. Uh, that is an incentive for them not to be as rigorous in their financial uh, management and their care for patients as they otherwise should be. So they have been told uh, by March of uh, next year we expect to see these uh, improvements. If not, of course, uh, they will need to explain why that is and explain why they have failed uh, to, uh, to meet the promises that they have given both the government and the people of Wales. Just before we rose for the summer recess, 
the government pulled the rug out from underneath the Circuit of Wales project, which would have brought hundreds of millions of pounds of much-needed private investment into the Northern Valleys. And as a fig leaf, the First Minister and his government <coughs> uh, then proposed that they should invest £100 million of public money in a speculative scheme to create a new industrial park uh, in uh, uh, the Ebervale area. Given that the Ebervale Enterprise Zone has been in operation now for quite a number of years, and uh, tens of millions of pounds have already been invested in jobs in that area, but only 320 new jobs have been created and 70 safeguarded. Why does the First Minister think that his speculative proposal is going to be any more successful? Talk to businesses, and uh, one of the issues particularly that businesses have flagged up with us is the lack of suitable premises where they can go in order to set up uh, manufacturing. Uh, and one of, the, uh, one of the issues that we're looking at is uh, being able to provide them with the premises that they need of the right size. Uh, we don't do that as in terms of building empty buildings for no reason. We've done that uh, by uh, consulting with businesses, asking businesses what they want. That's actually a very sound way of investing for the future, uh, rather than, as he calls it, uh, being speculative. It's far from uh, speculative. This is based on uh, the feedback that we're getting from business. Well, there are, of course, no firm offers to take space in the area which the First Minister is talking about. My colleagues and I uh, had the advantage on Friday of visiting St Athen and seeing what's happening at the Aston Martin uh, construction uh, that's going on there, which is a Welsh Government success story. I f f fully acknowledge that and congratulate the First Minister. Uh, but, of course, the St Athen is a very different uh, kettle of fish from... Ebbw Vale in terms of its potential attractiveness to investors without improving the infrastructure still further in the northern valleys. And the whole point about the Circuit of Wales project and the job spin-offs which would come from it is not so much the racetrack itself, but the way in which the circuit would have made the air, put, put it on the map in, in, in a sense, and, uh, and would have attracted further automotive businesses around it. Uh, given that uh, as a result of the collapse of, of uh, that offer, um, the Welsh Government is trying now to fill a vacuum. I really can't see why uh, he's turned down the offer of hundreds of millions of pounds of private investment where the Government's only liability was highly contingent upon the total failure of the project and the assets which would have been created uh, fetching nothing. No, we've explored this before. I've explained to him the, the issue of what counts as on the books and, and off the books. He what he describes as speculative, every business venture is speculative to, uh, to some extent, but in some ways, in the question he asked, he answered uh, the, the, his first question, that is, one of the reasons why St Athen proved attractive to Aston Martin is because there was a building there that, that, that fitted their, uh, their spec, that it was what they wanted, uh, the site was right. Many businesses have said to us, uh, in conversations I, I've had, well, look, one of the issues we face in Wales is we want, we want to go to somewhere like Ebbw Vale, but where do we go? The buildings aren't there, uh, the premises we need aren't there. That's why part of the, uh, the investment we're putting into uh, Vale, into the heads of the valleys, is to make sure that the right premises are there so businesses can move in, rather than an obstacle uh, being in place uh, that won't be removed without government investment. Yes, is that speculative? Well, in the sense that all business is speculative, but it's based, in my mind, on a much sounder ground uh, than, than the circuit was. Yeah. But, of course, the Circuit of Wales project was more than just speculative. It was a fully worked out business case, which I understand was not undermined by the, the Welsh Government. Uh, the objection to the Welsh Government's support for the project was based upon internal accounting conventions, in its opinion, and in any event, um, set by Her Majesty's Treasury. Um, so the Circuit of Wales project itself uh, will rise or fall upon its own economic merits. No doubt the First Minister will have seen uh, on Wales Online today that the promoters of the project have now come up with a, another proposal that perhaps they could access funding under the city deal. And so I'm anxious not to engage in any kind of inter-party fisticuffs today, which might discourage the Welsh Government from helping the project, even at this late stage, to become viable. And so I wonder if the First Minister uh, can, in the most general terms, give his support to f making further efforts to look at whether the Circuit of Wales could actually be made into a reality. Well, we've never rejected the Circuit as an idea, but simply the financial um, arrangements surrounding it. 
uh, if the uh, circuit is able to come up with, with a, a different proposal, then of course that's something that we would, uh, we, we would look at. We don't have an objection in principle, but we have to make sure uh, that any project uh, takes into account the interests of Welsh uh, taxpayers and is able to demonstrate very strongly that, that the jobs that are promised are in fact deliverable. If there is something else that comes forward, then of course we'd look at that to see uh, whether the circumstances have changed. First Minister, can you imagine a country where mega prisons are placed in the middle of so-called enterprise zones? Or can you imagine a country which ends up being described as a botany bay of the 21st century and as a yeah. penal con colony? Well, those are the, the words of Francis Crook, the respected chief executive of the Howard League. First Minister, Wales must be the only country in the world where prisons are highlighted as tools for economic development rather than as part of a country's uh, criminal justice system. Do you expect other prisons to close if the Port Talbot prison goes ahead? And can you confirm whether there will be a net jobs gain or do you think there will be a loss? These are matters for the Ministry of Justice to, uh, to answer. We're not responsible for, for prison policy. But uh, she asked the question uh, about prisons. I have a prison in my constituency. It was very controversial when it was built. I was the ward councillor when it was uh, built at the time. Now, no one takes any notice of it. It employs many people. There's a housing estate being built almost up to the, well, not far from the walls uh, of the prison. But nevertheless, it is important that people's concerns are addressed, because I remember at the time uh, people's concerns. Uh, it is important uh, that the MOJ carries out a full consultation uh, with, uh, with people uh, in the area. That is their responsibility. Our responsibility lies with the issue of the land. Well, bluntly, uh, we look to get the, the best deal possible for the Welsh taxpayer for the land, uh, regardless, of course, of uh, how that land is, is disposed of. We are on the issue of the prison not actively promoting a prison. We want to get the best, um, the best financial outcome for the Welsh taxpayer. I'm glad you raised the question of the, the land, uh, First Minister, because there's a vision for a Swansea metro uh, that has the potential to transform the city and its hinterland, and it's the most attractive vision for our second city that we've seen in years. But the land you marked for the Bagland Prison appears to sit on the blueprint. Now, Plaid Cymru's uh, view of that prison is well known. And there are members of your own party who are in agreement with us that this is not the right site. Is it not the case that you will be selling off land that would otherwise be part of a future Swansea metro? Yeah. Will you acknowledge that you are in a position to stop this project by refusing to sell this yeah. land? And if you do accept that, will you now refuse to, uh, to sell that land? Well, we would not do anything that would jeopardise the future of the Swansea uh, Metro. Uh, that, that's true. But there are broader issues here that do have to be addressed. Uh, the prisons are crumbling, no question about that. As somebody who, you know, familiar with the system at one time in my job, you know, the, our prisons are long, long overdue uh, being, uh, being replaced. We, we know that some of them are, are Victorian. We export prisoners. Uh, women prisoners cannot serve their sentences in Wales. Uh, there's no Category A prison in Wales. We still have too many... Uh, prisoners who are unable to serve their time close to their, to their communities, and that's important uh, from their perspective in terms of their rehabilitation. What I don't know is whether she takes the view that there shouldn't be a prison at all, or whether they should move on to another site. Uh, if it is the case that they should move on to another site, you'd be open to suggestions as to where that should be. You could argue there should be multiple sites, First Minister. All of the problems that you have just outlined will not be solved by building this mega prison so close to another new prison. Your economic policy is leading us to a situation where our national interests are not being upheld. <coughs> Devolution and self-government is supposed to allow us to look after our own needs, to be an equal partner with our neighbours and not a servant. These super prisons are designed for the criminal justice needs, not of our country, but of the country next door. And it's not me saying that, it's coming from the top English and UK <coughs> voices on prison reform. Why are you set a, setting up a commission on justice if not to deal with questions like this? And it's not just about prisons, First Minister. It's this mantra of jobs at any cost that has led you to accepting the disposal of mud from a nuclear site in Welsh waters. What on earth is Wales doing taking waste from another country that could 
be radioactive. Now, I don't know why you granted that licence in the first place. I'd like to know whether you have any regrets about granting that licence. Will you agree to revoke it if it transpires that there is even the smallest risk to people's health? Well, she, she's telling half the story. First of all, she knows full well the licensing is not done by ministers. It's done by an arm's length body. It's the whole point. So the politics is taken out of it. Uh, what I've seen so far is one person has said there may be an issue here. Well, of course, that issue needs to be addressed. But we've got to be careful here because uh, the waste from Wilver goes to England. And uh, if it wasn't for Sellafield as a reprocessing plant, it would shut immediately. Now, you know, I, she has views on nuclear power that perhaps I wouldn't, I wouldn't share, but it's, it's too crude simply to say, well, this is nuclear waste being exported to, to, from England to Wales. We export a lot more uh, out, into, uh, out, out towards Sellafield. So I don't accept that this is an, ex, an import-export issue uh, where we have nuclear power. It's important that there are adequate disposal uh, facilities, but simply to present it in terms of an England-Wales battle ignores the fact we have our own nuclear power station and we don't have our own disposal facilities. We rely on England to deal with the waste that comes from Wilbur. I have a question about the staff staff uh, of course, be there a good board that can get the need a can have and lean out for the new one sicker high, but more of a for the agile and a goglet and moon, of course, a sicker high, but more gavle, but ball, uh, it's the audio goglet, uh, eha for the bell run or ruid with a for the uh, camry, uh, yeah. And all figure a cohoidwit gang confederation NHS Cymru a Miss Mai Eleni, Roid Kant, Petro de Gagin, or Suidi Medical, Bord the Achid, Betsy Kaldwalader, and Wag. Mae hyn yn cynnwys oli tri deg saith y cant o'r holl swyddi meddygol sy'n wag yn y gwasanaeth iechyd yng Nghymru. A mi gwasan i ddadl yn fan hyn wrth os dweitha wrth drafod yr adroddiad gan y pwyllgor iechyd a gofal cymdeithasol a recrutio meddygol. Ond er yr holl dystiolaeth gan y pwyllgor, y proffesiwn a'r sector yn eu hangach am yr angen i symud tua gat sefydlu ysgol feddygol yng Ngogledd Cymru, mae'r llodraeth yn dal i wrthod ar sail datganiadau anelwyg ynglyn â chost a chymhlethdod y broses. Mae'r honiad fod sefydlu ysgol feddygol yn y gogledd yn rhy gostus yn nonsens llwyr o ystyried yr holl fil yna mae Betsy Cydwalyd yr yn i wario ar locums bron i 80 miliwn dros y dair blynedd dweitha. Prif fwy'n iddo, faint yn fwy o gleifion yn y gogledd ydych chi'n fodlon i gweld ar restra aros, cyn i chi wrando ar yr arbenigwyr a thalu sylw i'r dystiolaeth. Well, do, do we have to do or are going to wait till you can the goal and the goal and the goal? No, if you wait, uh, honey. Marae fi wneud hynny. Cariwch mlaen. Yn uh, ail, uh, beth ni o'n sicr hai bod y gogledd yn cysylltu gyda deir mwyn creu uh, system hyfforddi sydd uh, ar draws Cymru yn gyfan cwbl. Beth sy'n uh, cyfri, wrth gwrs, i'r ffaith bod uh, rhyna sydd eisiau cael ei hyfforddi yn gweld bod y safon ddigon achel. Ni o'n sicr hai bod y safon yn gynnwys ar draws uh, Cymru a dyn nhw'n gwmws beth ni'n mynd i, uh, i wneud. Ni'n gwybod yn gynnwys ac hyfforddi yng Nglian Byddagon Tili er enghraifft bod uh, yn, yn y gogledd ddwyrain a gogledd orllewin bod pob lle wedi cael i lanwyr erbyn hyn ynglyn â llefydd hyfforddi. Dim yn iawn, ynglyn â'r achanol y gogledd, ond nid i gweld bod yna mwy o bobl yn dod i'r gogledd i hyfforddi, a ni mewn sicrhau bod ni'n symud at datblygu system o addysg meddygol yn y gogledd dros y blynyddau er mwyn sicrhau bod y gogledd yn cael ei stafydd fel tro le lle mae hyfforddi'n gallu cymryd lle yn y ffordd mwy ag yfan gwbl sy'n bosib. Dyn nhw'n beth yw nod y llywodraeth, dwi'n credu bod nhw'n llawer yn meddwl o'n gilydd yng Nglyna beth nhw'n mwyn sicr wneud. Janet Finn Saunders. Thank you. And I'm really pleased that Sean Gwentlian has actually raised this again. And I, I would urge all North Wales AMs to make similar calls and to hold you to account, First Minister. This has been going on for years. Sean is quite right to mention there are 141 long-term vacancies. We have hospital wards in North Wales that are closed down for several months. We've met with the BMA. We've met with other medical professionals. And there is a distinct need, it's been proven, for a training 
centre somewhere in North Wales. The fact is, and the statistics prove, that those who train in Cardiff move over into England. We cannot recruit. The Betsy board cannot recruit. Now, this is a board that's in special measures. It's got Welsh government intervention, and yet it is failing at every level in terms of staff recruitment, in terms of keeping wards open. When are you, and when is your Cabinet Secretary, who consistently sits here during uh, health questions, shaking his head. Well, I'm sorry, but you and the Cabinet Secretary, we're here to scrutinise you, and you are failing the patients of North Wales. You're failing the Health Board, and you're failing uh, the, the actual staff that work there. We are in crisis in North Wales. We need a training centre in Bangor. The costs, as Sian has, pr uh, has pointed out quite well, are there to be? We cannot keep taking can, locum can staff. You bring we this want. To a question. Yeah, okay, thank you. We want a long-term solution. You, the one that has the the levers to do this. Please, can we have a training school in Bangor? Well, I agree with her when she says she wants more training opportunities in the north. There's no distance between us on that. It's how it's delivered. She's asking, can it be an independent medical school? Well, we know that that's not what. Uh, uh, what is recommended. We know it would be difficult because big medical schools are in big cities uh, with big hospitals which have a far greater spread of specialities. What can be done, however, is to make sure that Bangor is tied, the whole of the North is tied in more completely with Cardiff and Swansea, that we move to put in place uh, a, a, a system of development over the next few years in order to provide better opportunities in the north, and that's the way to do it. It's important to be able to link Bangor with the, with the bigger hospitals to provide the training opportunities in the, most, in the most comprehensive way. I think everybody in the medical profession understands that. I get the point that we need to provide more training opportunities in the north. I don't dispute what the member for Avron has said. It's a question now of not do we do it, but what is the most effective way of doing it, and we believe we've outlined that. Question Pedwar Simon Thomas. Uh, Morning to school you voted how well that bloggy I get in here quickly, but I bought in Cavate being Henry on a blog at Leo, now I can do board off. Uh Pivinero Gai just and Gunter come not even the Orchada e staff uh spetty bond likes being Gavali and the Mab and the sort of Pathemos Dweather and Adwan uh Damwine. Uh, a bris a quelli dwi'n diolch, uh, diolch gael ac yn gwerthfyfogi a gwaith mae'r staff yn neud yn bwrdd iechyd uh, hawl dda. Ond, mae rhaid cydnabod, ac mae'r gwneudog wedi cydnabod wrth y fi mewn ateb cwestiwn dros y chaf bod yn y diffyg mewn rhai maesydd a gwasanaeth pediatig yn benodol i'w hynny. Uh, mae Dr. Fas fel cawr uh, sy'n newydd uh, ymddeol y flwyddyn diwetha o ysbyty Llwynheleg wedi gwaed bod y gwasanaeth uh, pediatric and I got Lewin Arvin Methi, my gay river, Arvin Methi, a hair with a diffig recruitio, my Gideni Huech, Suidwag, a governor, I'm going to hold with pediatric, a Hinnabid, a governor, Spati Sloin Helig, Akmar, Amgir recruitio, Sunneth Gan, uh, Bondlice with hair recruitio, and Ian, I'm going to hold with Newid. Let's see, my ride go with Arnochi, Kama, Pendant, a Benodol, he sick at high recruitio, Gwell. Your staff and a good showing. Well, because we're going to be going with about the special activity already. We're going to be showing Vlini Glut, Vlini has still a day near the Gogleth, uh, with the Weedle Vana. Uh, and I mean, we're going to wait, uh, but Dalywood Harrier and a good showing. Uh, we're going to board, uh, Savasla and Sloan Hillig and Robert Drostro near Ruth Parhal, Guide Wadener, and we go over board the Ahead and we thank Gallery and Monocry Trouble, Sisha and Nino. But see them many, many, many dig with it, many dig with any them in Noel, Irhain, Vodel, Odna, and Nid Vesley with the College Brent Hino, but it would in a golden great Henny on Nid Vesley or Barna College Brent Hino. On the course, we go over the board and we thank Gallery, to it was heavy to them get recruiters a Gidani, Ermon Sikai, but a special draw straw, and soon Helig and Newid, Ermoin, but a system Goval and Donoli with order of plan, say the Costi de Gaur a deed. Paul Davis. Prevenir of an all board the Echid, previous school who will find what he could never be more your problem, recruit you on a spitty, Lun Helig, Rosplan, the Dwitha, Herwith, by the new Lioliad, a respetty, Dana Pamar, board than Dwayne, the board where he got for Newid, Orie, Gwasanetha Pediatric, Erengreif. Now, Marathalwir, Dwayne, and Richoli, Shigwell, Gwasanetha Pediatric, Launam Ser, and Kaliail Gavluino, and a respetty, but he got to he. Uh, Gadan Hybrid Swadreth in Catino are Nord uh, Honey. A Kevid, Gashuki the way to Thony in Peth, 
mae'r llywodraeth chi wedi wneud yn wahanol i gymharu ar chwech mis y dweitha i ddelio â problemau recrutio. Well, my father, of course, is born the head. On the course, man, the last thing I know, he recruited when Dali Naid Hani. I do go in. I do the best of all. I best all know. Na, as Naid Vesli made a draw the other night. I do the best. But the but the guys in the end don't wish or go bowling in Hani. Marvin will be away. Drossel will be there. But problem with the board in the recruit team and the spatai. And he's been all the gout and our a muiar got there when he made a muiar or spatai at the score he made heavy. Dyna pa, mae'r mae holl bwysig wedi gwrs i sicrhau bod um, arbennig gwir pa maen nhw'n mynd i ysbatau yn y gorllewin fod yn tymol fel rhan o rhywbeth sydd yn, sydd yn, sydd yn fwy. Er mwyn bod y gefnogaeth proffesiynol gyda nhw. Dyna beth sy'n digwydd wrth gwrs wrth y cysylltiad sy'n gyda nhw gyda trefores yn y gogledd, gyda, well, yn y gorllewin, yn y gogledd, wrth rhai o ysbatau Lerpwl, ond gael 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 uh, the issue of paediatric ambulatory care unit in Withybush and all the headline stories that we have heard. And what I was, was, was told quite clearly is that they recognise that they have recruitment problems and that those recruitment problems are not unique just to them, nor to Wales, nor to the rest of the UK. But what they did tell me was that looking at those challenges in a positive way so that they can deliver an alternative uh, model uh, to the one that is currently provided on a temporary basis. So could I ask, uh, uh, First Minister, what discussions the Welsh Government has had and will have in the future with the Health Board uh, about what those strategies might be able to deliver and how effective that we could expect them to be? Well, I understand that on the 21st, uh, a few days ago, uh, a new consultant paediatrician was recruited to Withybush. Uh, also, there have been the appointments of two locums and two uh, substantive consultant posts across their paediatric services. The Health Board inform us that also in discussions with two further candidates for a community paediatrics and consultant uh, paediatric uh, post. So that is encouraging. Uh, and, of course, uh, in doing that, we want to make sure that there is more to come. Question Pimp, Mark Isherwood. How is the Welsh Government supporting apprenticeships in Wales? Well, I'm glad that the members asked the question because we're transforming the skills journey through the creation of uh, apprenticeship pathways to deliver on our commitment of 100,000 apprenticeship places for those of all ages in line with the Welsh Government's priorities and in line with the promises we made last year. Uh, well, thank you for that. When I, uh, early this year, raised in the Economy, Infrastructure and Skills Committee concern expressed by the four Welsh police forces that they couldn't access the apprenticeship levy and the £2 million they were paying into it, uh, the skills minister replied that the Welsh Government would instead strike up a grant or contract arrangements in dialogue with the College of Policing and that they had meetings in the diary with the Police and Crime Commissioners. I was then told subsequently in March that those meetings had at that stage been cancelled and not rescheduled. How do you respond to the concern expressed in August by the four Police and Crime Commissioners and Chief Constables uh, in Wales? that this could result in 45 fewer officers in North Wales and potential recruits choosing to sign up to work for English forces <coughs> instead uh, and calling for urgent action from the Welsh Government um, because the situation was putting them at a distinct uh, disadvantage, finally pointing out that although in England uh, the money forces pay into levy go goes to the English Police College, in Wales it goes to the Welsh Government and therefore this lies in your hands. Well, we, we could have done this if policing was devolved, but his party has sat there consistently in this chamber and demanded that policing should not be uh, devolved. We are not going to fund services that should be funded by a non-devolved body. This is a tax that was imposed by his party, uh, a tax on business. Uh, we have received a share of that and we will use that money to pay for apprenticeships, but we cannot, in good faith, pay. Uh, towards uh, apprenticeship schemes that sit in non-devolved areas. That surely is the responsibility of the UK Government, as they keep on telling us. Here we're Anka Davis. Dear Llywydd, uh, I'm sure the First Minister would agree with me that 
Some of the most inspiring visits that we have as assembly members in our own constituency are to employers big and small who take on apprenticeships on a regular basis, whether those are what we might call entry-level apprenticeships or higher apprenticeships or even degree apprenticeships as well, like graduate apprenticeships. Companies like Sony, who are actually now setting the standard in terms of apprenticeship development within the workforce. Companies in your own constituency, First Minister, such as Ford's in Bridgend, uh, who over many, many years have developed people in electromechanical engineering apprenticeships, in business management apprenticeships, and so much more. There is a great deal to be done, but much that is being achieved. But would you agree with me that one of the most significant ways that we can increase the pipeline of apprenticeships is by investing in heavy, big infrastructure? And whilst we may have missed the opportunity with the investment of electrification all the way down to Swansea, there is a way to make up some of the ground and that is for the UK government to give the go-ahead on the Tidal Lagoon in Swansea, because that will develop civil engineering apprenticeships, project management apprenticeships, business management apprentices, and many, many more. That, on its own, would have a significant effect on apprenticeships right across the region. Well, I very much agree with what the uh, member has said. I, uh, some may have noticed that I gave a speech on the weekend when I called on the UK government to deliver the Tidal Lagoon. The response from the UK government was that I should focus on public services in Wales and not mention the lagoon. Oh. Now, uh, that causes me a, a great deal of trepidation, because normally the response is we are still considering it. That suggests to me that they're going to axe the lagoon. Uh, and that is something that, that is a great concern to, uh, to me, I'm sure, members of this chamber, indeed, outside of my own party. This is a project that will deliver clean, green energy not just for Wales, but into the national grid. It will deliver 1,000 jobs in manufacturing and maintenance, particularly in the area of Port Talbot. And we've had prevarication after prevarication after prevarication, even an independent review, which I suspect was set up to say, don't go ahead with it, and then came up, came up with the uh, suggestion that we should go ahead with it, has reported this project should happen. A billion pounds was put on the table for Northern Ireland. A billion pounds for Northern Ireland. A coach and horses driven to the Barnet formula. You know, we've heard that, that's that sacrifice. That was ignored as far as Northern Ireland was concerned. Where is the tidal lagoon? The people of Wales deserve an answer. They deserve those jobs and they deserve consideration of the UK government. Question Chwech Dailoid. Diolch about, Lewis. I'm nice to prove any dog that's ganiad. I'm the vodol. Gwasson eithau trauma and near Cymru. I missed the question. There was a bit of yapping on my left. I, I, I have the question for Kaya. It's on the order paper. Kaya, I'm there. Hello. Well, I'm going to come to the Echid and Mishmedi, my brother Echid Urthina Styria, I'm Hefi and Lina Savadli, Fluidwife Trauma Maur, I'm going to be a Camry or Lewin Camry or De Powis, I'm going to be a Hindu Derby and Firviol, a Drolly the Panel, or I'm going to be a Bunnol, I'm going to be a Fluidwife Trauma Maur, I'm going to be a Trauma Maur. Diolch o fawr am yr ateb na prif yn eidog yn naturiol mae'r argymhelliad i sefydlu'r brif yn olfan trawma yn ysbyty a thrafol Cymru yng Nghair Dydd yn y siampl arall o wasaneth sy'n cael ei gynoli yng Nghair Dydd ar draul ysbyty treforis yn Abertawe. Ac mae hyn yn dilyn colli gwasanaethau eraill fel niwrolawdriniaeth rai bynyddoedd yn ôl. Niwrolawdriniaeth i blant a niwrolawdriniaeth i oedolion wedi mynd o Abertawe i Gair Dydd. Yn wir collodd treforis uned niwrolawdriniaeth i blant er bod unig niwrolawfeddig i blant ar y pryd drwy Gymru gyfan yn rheforis, ond oedd hynna ddim yn ddigon i gadw'r uned yn rheforis eto i Gair Dydd. Yn y tiriol felly, mae'n y bryder yn neu'r llewyn Cymru bod gwasanaethau arbenigol yn cael eu colli ac nad yw ysbyty treforis yn ymddangos yn ddigon amlwg yng nghelluniau Llywodraeth Cymru. Mae colli neu gwanhau gwasanaethau yn tanseilio status yr ysbyty fel canolfan rhanbarthol o arbenigedd, a hefyd amcanion y fargen ddinesig yn abertawe sy'n edrych chi ddatblygu swyddi ymchwil a iechyd o ansawd uchel. A hefyd mae uned losgiadau treforis yr unig un yng Nghymru sydd hefyd yn gwasanaethu gorllewyn Lloegr, mae presenoldeb yr uned losgiadau yna yn hanfodol bwysig i unrhyw brif gynolfan rhanbarthol. Drawma. Felly, yn dilyn hynna i gyd, a wnewch chi fel llywodraeth ymrwymo i gyflwymo gweledigaeth fanol ar gyfer safle treforis sy'n adeiladu ar ei gryfderau amlwg. Mae treforis yn holl bwysig ynglyn â gwasanaeth iechyd fel ysbyty mawr sydd yn gwasanaeth i'r treforis o bobl. 
Ond uh, mi'n sôn am y ffaith bod Llywodraeth Cymru wedi wneud hyn, nid barn Llywodraeth Cymru yw hwn. Mae pan mae gyda chi'n sefyllfa fel hyn, lle mae yna bobl yn grif o blaid un safle yn y llall, a ddim ni'n ffordd chi'n llyn delio dyfe, yw sefydlu uh, panel annibynnol, dyna nhw'n gwmws sy'n wedi digwydd. Uh, mae'r panel hynny wedi um, rhoi i argymhellion um, i'r maes cyhoeddus, ni'n gwybod beth un o'r mater nawr i'r byrdd iechyd i weithio gyda'i gilydd er mwyn sicrhau bod cynafon yn dod. Ni'n gwybod, dwi'n meddwl hawsaf i gael, gael dau, ni'n gwybod hynny, dau gynolfan, dwy gynolfan, uh, ond wrth gwrs mi'n holl bwysig nawr bod yr argymhellion yn cael ei ystyried ac wrth gwrs bod, uh, bod penderfyniad yn dod. Ond yn gynnau a Llywodraeth Cymru, i ni ddim â barn, uh, achos y ffaith bod yna banel wedi uh, rhoi'r argymhellion am y nawr yn nwyl o'r bwrdd iechyd. Os, os nad os dyn nad ddim um, unrhyw fath o gytuno ynglyn â'r byrdau iechyd, wedyn ni wrth gwrs byddwn i'n dod i uh, Wynedogion Cymru, a wedyn ni wrth gwrs byddwn rhaid ystyried uh, pob ffaith uh, ynglyn â'r bleid yr asalwyr i fod. Susie Davis. Uh, Diolch, Llywydd. Uh, well, it's three years uh, since the expert panel was set up to consider the location of the new unit, and in that time, neither Cardiff or, nor Bristol has got any closer to Aberystwyth or Haverford West, in, uh, let alone places in my region. The head of the independent panel, as we heard, is now, um, is now speaking of moving the Burns unit from Morriston to Cardiff, and that, for me, raises questions about quite how these recommendations are being made in the first place. Morriston is just about to receive £2 million towards uh, investment uh, in response to cardiac emergency times, for which we're grateful, but it's obviously a material consideration in that decision, the length of time it takes ambulances to travel. So, if, how, so I, I accept that care in transit is a, is a material issue, but if it's being taken into consideration for deciding where emergency cardiac services to, to be improved, why isn't it such a material consideration in where trauma uh, services to be improved, and I appreciate it's not your opinion, but it will form the Cabinet Secretary's decision. I'm hoping to hear um, that transit times will be something uh, that is taken more, se uh, more seriously than it currently seems to be. Well, it might. I mean, it depends, of course, if, if the health boards agree or not. Uh, if they don't, then, of course, it will come to the Minister for the, the Cabinet Secretary for, for decision. Wherever you place the trauma centre, there will be people who are more than an hour away from it. It's inevitable. The, the geography dictates that. Of course, we have air ambulances which uh, are able to, to assist in terms of bringing people to hospitals more, more quickly. But the independent panel has made its recommendations. They're, they're out in the open now. It's now for the health boards to decide amongst themselves what the most effective way should be of establishing a major trauma centre. Not just a centre, but a trauma network as well. It all, can't all be about one centre, important though that centre is, wherever it goes. It has to be about establishing a proper, responsive network to trauma that can feed into that trauma centre in the most appropriate time. Finally, David Rees. Uh, First Minister, I can join in the concerns of my colleagues regarding the major trauma centre being located in Cardiff and the possible losses of services at Morriston. We know that when services move, others tend to follow them. Now, in this case, there is no service move because it's a new service. But what I want to guarantee is that the services at Morriston stay in Morriston because they've built up a reputation, they've built up a service delivery for local people, and I don't want to see that damage in any way whatsoever. It's important that Morriston stays not just a leader of that network, but the services it has stays. Morriston is bound to be uh, an important DGH. It, it provides many specialised services for the hospitals further west. Uh, in order for those hospitals to be able to, uh, to, to, to provide the services for their people. I know that, that, that uh, I've been told by, uh, by consultants who work in Morriston that they often work in the hospitals further west as well. So no, there's no question of Morriston um, losing its status as one of our Im most important DG, DGHs. Now, wherever the trauma centre goes, uh, and that is something for the, board, the, uh, the health boards to, to decide, it's important, as I said, that, that network is in place. At the end of the day, this is about providing more specialised and better care for people who are deeply in need of that care. We don't have a trauma centre. We need one. Uh, it is based in the south, that's true, uh, but we need to have one trauma centre wherever that, uh, that goes. But I, certainly, as far as Morrison is concerned, uh, it, it, you know, it remains a big hospital serving uh, you know, an important city and will continue to provide um, specialised services, not just for Swansea, but for further west as well. Mm -hmm.